welcome back to biology lectures with Ake Rili Yolanimiji Philip. So today we move on to the lock and key model of enzymatic reaction. Now you notice that from the other video you saw when we introduced what enzymes do, you remember the fact that the enzyme, um, sorry, the substrate fit into its substrate perfectly. And um, to make that easy, the lock and key model has been propounded or has been made. So the lock and key theory is one simplified model that is used to explain enzyme action. So the enzyme is the lock. So like you have a key with a keyhole as a lock, then the key is the substrate. There. So it fits in just the way you have something like this. So this active site here is the lock the substrate that bounded to it is the key. So you notice that when it's bound to that active site, after some time, it splits into two, into, like it has broken it down. So we have the enzyme substrate. So this is the enzyme, this is a substrate that you can see, it broke into two. Yeah, if you probably look at that animation, it's broken into two, then the reaction has finished, so to say. But the point is, the lock and key model tells you how enzymes and the substrate bind together perfectly into um, to bring about the reaction. So you can see it here again, the lock and key mechanism. So this is the key, this is the, the lock, so to say, all right? So, and this axis site exactly is actually the lock, actually, if I, if I really want to say it, the active site, the space there, is really, really, really the lock, so to say. This is the enzyme. Let me, let me write that in a better way. So this is the enzyme here. This space is the lock, and this is the key. All right, so this forms the enzyme substrate complex. Like, when they're already bounded together, then, of course, this is the product, this, the, it has broken it down into smaller ones. All right, so it says the enzymes and the substrates randomly, randomly move about in solution. But when an enzyme and its substrates randomly collide with the substrate fitting into the active site of the enzyme, an enzyme substrate complex is formed, all right? And the product is, of course, generated afterwards, broken down. Then the good news is after that, the enzyme remains the same, so the enzyme can go on to catalyze for the reaction. That's why they remain unchanged at the end of the reaction. Well, really, I don't, I can't really explain in the context of this video how, why they remain unchanged actually, because that's something like how come something can actually, I mean, break down a reaction and itself remains the same. That's a mystery in science actually. All right, so this is what we we're trying to say earlier on here again. It, it shows it more. So this is the key, which is the substrate. This is the lock, which is, I mean, this is the lock here, which is the enzyme there, like that. Yeah, so it fits just the way you have your key fit in there. So this is this, this active site is the lock. It's that simple. So because what I'm emphasizing is this, those of you writing IGCSE, GCSE, and the likes, this is a common question. Yes, like you are, you could even come in form of a six marker, asking you to state the sequence in which, or explain the lock and key model for marker. It's usually something you should expect in um, most examinations when it comes to talking about enzymes. It's very, very common. So remember this illustration of saying the key is the substrate, the active site is the lock, or you could just say the enzyme is the lock. Either way, it's still making sense. All right.